And so let's jump into the Word now. If you've got your Bible, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Once again, I'll be bouncing around in several different Bible passages as uh, this is a topical message, not my typical expository message. Uh, and the Pastor David's bringing around some of these uh, handouts that you're going to need uh, as you uh, go through this and prepare to uh, discuss this together on Wednesday. Uh, so let him know there, wave your hand or whatever, and uh, he'll get one to you if you don't have one this morning. We're talking about the service gifts this morning, the service gifts, the gifts of the Spirit. We've talked about the speaking gifts Last Sunday, we talked about the sign gifts. Today, by God's grace, we'll do a survey of the service gifts, the service gifts. Many of them we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, is anybody else warm or is it just me? Okay, a couple of you. <laughs> uh, can we turn the air on? Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. And um, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to have to take my jacket off or anything, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and uh, I'm going to read here from verses 8 through verse 10, and uh, then we'll look at several other passages as well. 1 Corinthians 12, now in verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Our Father, we pray that as we once again, look at some of these gifts of the Spirit that you would guide our thinking. Help us to understand what our place of service is in your body. I pray that uh, as we kind of survey these gifts this morning, that um, you would prick our hearts and minds. Show us where we fit in. And enable us by your spirit to see these gifts fulfilled in our lives. And as a result, we pray that the whole church would profit and that you would be glorified. Please guide us in these moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the, the service gifts. Uh, we've seen uh, these other gifts. Many gifts are speaking gifts. And, uh, and several of those we've looked at already. Uh, the speaking gifts, things like teaching, prophesying, and uh, evangelizing, things like that. Um, but now I want you to look at these service gifts that maybe uh, aren't uh, the, the upfront teaching, speaking kind of gifts, but they are no less valuable or important for sure. And so we're going to start here with our, our survey, uh, thinking about, first of all, the fact that all of these gifts, all of them, whether they're speaking gifts, sign gifts, or service gifts, all of these gifts are given by God's Holy Spirit and according to His will, His design, His purpose. And so one of the dangers we may have in doing a, a spiritual gifts survey is we might think to ourselves, hmm, I wonder what one I seem to have. I wonder what I'm most like. And sometimes it could be confused with more of a personality test than a spiritual gifts test. And so we're not going to look at these gifts and think to ourselves, well, let's see, I don't like this and I do like that and I don't like this, so that must mean I'm this one. That's not how we're going to discern what spiritual gift we have. Because first of all, it's not by your design or your choice, but it's by God's design and God's choice. And so the fact is, you'll never know the gift that God has given to you by His Holy Spirit unless you are walking in the Spirit. You must yield yourself to the Holy Spirit of God and allow Him 
to guide you and lead you in whatever place of service he would have for you. And you might think to yourself, I don't think I want to do that or I don't like that. Then you're going to miss out on the spiritual gift that God has given to you. Okay, so we, we've got to have the right focus that I've got to yield myself to God's Holy Spirit and allow him uh, to manifest himself in the gifts through me in some way. So it's by his design and for his purpose and for God's glory. So nobody, nobody exercises spiritual gifts for some glory. Uh, and, and so if, if we took a spiritual gifts test, and there are many that are out there, and you could find them online and, and go through and click the little, you know, uh, check boxes and see which one, and then go to the end of the test and it says, voila, this is your spiritual gift. That, that may be helpful in some sense, but the best way to determine your spiritual gift is to yield yourself to God's Holy Spirit and let him work through you. And then you look back and say, wow, hey, I was, I was serving God and he really used me in this way. And you know what? I was energized by that. And, and it was pretty exciting. And God, uh, God showed me that, that he can use even me in some way. And that's amazing. And it's incredible. And so God gets glory when we yield ourselves to him. Let's look at a couple of these gifts and, uh, and I'll try to follow the, uh, I guess, the format that I have in your notes here as we go through. The first two that we're going to look at is faith and giving. Faith and giving. Let's think about the gift of faith first. And we just read it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, and, uh, and you saw it there in verse number 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. Now that's interesting because uh, we know from other pl places in Scripture that we're we're all to have faith. Uh, it's, it's not as though some people have it and some people don't. But there is a gift of faith, which is really interesting. Now, in some sense, uh, every person's faith is a gift to them from God, uh, in some sense. But, but when we think about spiritual gifts, remember the purpose of the gift is to profit with all, as it says in Scripture, uh, and let me look down and find it. Uh, I think I, I didn't read that verse, did I? Um, so uh, I think it's back earlier, isn't it? Verse number six. There are diversities of operations. Nope. Um, seven, is that what it is? Manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. There it is. Thank you. To profit with all. So these gifts are given to profit with all. So when we're thinking about the gift of faith, the purpose of this gift is it's given to you in a, in a supernatural way, just as every gift is given to you, but its design is to profit the body, the body of Christ. It's to profit others. It's to help others as well. And so it's unique to think about uh, the, the faith that we have. No one is saved apart from faith. Okay, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, uh, no one is saved apart from faith. That's how we get saved, that's simply trusting God at His word. God says it, I believe it. That's faith, believing in the promises of God. So God says, if I trust Jesus as my Savior, then he will save me. I will be saved forever. And I believe that promise. I believe that promise. And so that's exercising some confidence in what God has said. There may be other promises that God has given that uh, God gifts individuals in the church to believe those promises to profit the whole church. You ever meet somebody and you think, man, they've got, they, they just have this faith. They just believe God. They just believe God, all these promises. And I think to myself, oh, boy, I don't know if I can, you know, I want to believe. I just don't know if I can. And they come along and they say, well, yeah, believe it. You know, that's what the Bible says. They trust God's word. And you know what? You and I kind of profit a little bit from that. Uh, we, we, uh, we're encouraged to exercise faith when we see the faith of others as well. 
And so this, this gift of faith is, is unique. Uh, and, and if you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, we kind of see a little bit of some of the purpose for this as well. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, and um, by God's grace, next Sunday we're going back to Hebrews and we're getting back in our Hebrews study. Uh, and so again, if I, if I don't hit everything in the chapter, you'll forgive me because we'll get that later, all right? So Hebrews 11, and let me just say, I'm not going to get everything in the chapter in this message or any message. Uh, Hebrews 11, look with me at uh, verse number one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. An interesting definition there. Uh, faith, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We'll dig into that more later. Verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Now, the rest of the chapter records how these elders or these that have, have gone before us exercised what we look at as supernatural faith. And there were some amazing things in their lives because of that supernatural faith. And, and so this chapter talks about the good report or good testimony, the good witness. We can look at their lives today. We benefit from the faith of these that have gone before us. Because we look at their lives and see what they did and what they went through and how they believed God, how they trusted God. And we think to ourselves, wow, if they can trust God, I can trust God. And so they, they have this good report, this good testimony. And that's what this, is, this whole chapter is about. Not, not the miracles that happened, but the good testimony that these ones have because of their faith. Because of their faith. So we could look at some of those. Uh, you think of Enoch. He was translated. I mean, he just, he didn't even die. He went right up to be with God the Father in heaven. You think of Abraham, how he, he trusted God. He obeyed God. He was looking for uh, that promised land. And, and all the way down through all of these incredible stories of faith. Um, and then I want you to look towards the end of that chapter. And uh, look with me at... Uh, uh, wow, Let, let's, let's look at verse 33. And I'll read down to the end. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, Verse 35, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, the bonds of imprisonment. And they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing, for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Isn't that interesting? Who is benefiting at the end of this chapter from these incredible stories of faith? It is we, the saints. And they, in that time, didn't seem to receive the benefits, did they? Some of them sawn asunder, martyred, Killed, destitute, yet always trusting God. And that incredible faith in God, that incredible trusting God, and that incredible testimony benefits us today. You see, in the same sense, back in 2 Corinthians 12, this gift of faith that is given to some in the church is for the benefit of others. It's for the benefit of the whole body of Christ. 
so that we can see that incredible faith that they display. Maybe, the, maybe God has given you the gift of faith and you are going through an incredible trial in your life right now. And other people would look at your testimony and think, wow, I don't know if I could keep trusting God through that. But God has given you faith and you trust him no matter what. You know who benefits? I do. And the rest of the saints. Because God has given you faith through that trial, through that difficulty. Have you thought about that? God gives great faith. Sometimes we think of, of this gift of faith as, as tied to like some faith healing movement. Oh boy, they really have the gift of faith because boy, they, they believe that this person to be healed. Boom, they're healed and all that stuff. I don't think it's talking about that. It's, it's trusting God for his promises for sure. And I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that God can't do miracles because he does. You know it as well as I do. But God gives supernatural faith to people to benefit the church. If you think you've got the gift of faith, <clears throat> it's not the gift of faith unless it's benefiting the rest of the body. And so how is your life showing a good witness and a good testimony for the benefit of others in the body of Christ? That's an interesting thought to think about. Interesting thought. The gift of faith. The gift of faith. A spiritual gift given to some in the body to profit with all. Well, let's look at another one. The gift of giving. You say, Pastor Joel, you might as well just move right on because I don't have that one. <laughs> don't you? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. The gift of giving. We see this in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and other passages as well. So we'll look at a couple of them. Romans chapter 12. Find your way there. And it is mentioned in this passage. Again, uh, let me remind you that none of these passages that we'll look at list all of the gifts, which implies that there may be some gifts that we're not even aware of. And that nobody has the complete list of all the gifts. I just wanted to mention that. But in Romans chapter 12, uh, we see in verse number 8, the Bible says, Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Uh, or maybe a better translation, liberality. He that giveth, let him do it with liberality, with simplicity. Uh, so a person that has the gift of giving uh, just gives liberally to others. And you think, well, it must be that the wealthy people have that gift, or they ought to, <laughs> right? You might think that way. No, no, not at all, not at all. There were some in Scripture that had this incredible gift, uh, and we can see it in, let's see, 1 Corinthians I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look with me at 2 Corinthians. Uh, let's get back to chapter 8. Chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I say, pick one, Pastor Joel. Okay, I'm going with, with 8. <laughs> okay, it's 8 and 9 that uh, talk about this primarily. Chapter 8, look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren... We do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liber liberality. And for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing to of themselves. Here, this church was given the gift of giving, and they were exercising this gift of giving. And in fact, they gave beyond their power, their ability to do so. They gave beyond their ability to give. That's amazing. Why? Because they were willing of themselves. Verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Okay, these people gave, not because all of a sudden they had a bunch of money to do so, but because first they gave themselves to the Lord. Remember we talked about 
having, the, having these gifts from God's Holy Spirit, the only way that you know what that gift is is when you first yield yourself to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to have His way in your life. You give yourself to the Lord, and then He blesses you with a gift of some sort to use for the body of Christ. And in this case, they were willing, they willingly gave themselves to the Lord, and then God said, okay, good, here's some money for you to give to the poor saints in Jerusalem. And so they started giving. And they gave beyond their ability to do so, beyond their power, they began to give. Insomuch that we desired Titus, verse 6, that he had begun, so we would also finish in you the same grace also. Grace, that's a gift. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and in knowledge, and all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it. That's the giving. That as there was readiness to will, so there might be a performance also out of that which ye have. Uh, so we are willing first. We give ourselves to the Lord and that he blesses us. And the gift of giving is that way. And so you trust God. And then you see a need. And perhaps the Lord's, God's Holy Spirit says to you, it's time to share in that need. And your flesh says, no, I don't want to do that. But you know God's Holy Spirit is saying, yes, you must do that. And so you yield to God's Holy Spirit and you give and meet a need in somebody's life. And then God's Holy Spirit blesses you and provides and God supplies your need so that you can continue giving more than what you ever thought you could give before. That is the gift of giving. And that's a gift that God's Holy Spirit gives to many in his church. Perhaps God has blessed you in that way. Well, let's look at the gift of discernment. This is an interesting one. Discernment. Uh, back in 1 Corinthians 12, you might as well have like a bookmark in 1 Corinthians 12 and another one in, in Romans 12 as well. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, where we see this gift of discernment. Verse number 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. This is a service gift. An ability that God gives to some in order to distinguish truth from error. And perhaps this gift is specifically uh, for spiritual battles. This is discernment of spirits. And that's interesting to think about uh, because there are different kinds of spirits. You're aware of that. There is the Holy Spirit, but there are also demons who are unclean spirits. And there are many of them. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, but spiritual wickedness in high places. We are doing a battle with demons and the devil himself. But here's the, here's the hard thing. Sometimes those demons don't come dressed up like demons. In fact, most often, they follow their leader, who is an angel of light, or he is like an angel of light, the devil himself, convincing you, this is good, this is right, this is okay, and you should do this. And you need some spiritual discernment. God has given some in his church to be able to discern. No, wait a minute. This is not from God. This is from the devil. And, and a study of God's word will help you in that gift as well. But perhaps there are some that God has given this gift to, to be able to quickly discern what is from God's Holy Spirit and what is from the devil and unclean spirits. It's an important gift uh, that is mentioned here in Scripture. 
Of course, during the time of Jesus, there were many, many, many demons and unclean spirits uh, all the time working actively against Jesus Christ. And he knew them. Nobody knows the devil's work better than God himself and Jesus himself. And so Jesus knew those demons and called them out. And he was able to do that. Yield to God's Holy Spirit and he will, through your relationship with Christ, give you the ability to distinguish between those that are right and those that are wrong spirits. But let's hasten on. We have discernment. Let's also look at this gift of service. The gift of service we see back there in Romans 12. And all of these gifts kind of fall in this category, some sort of, of service. In Romans 12, once again, in verse number 7, the Bible says, Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. The word ministry there, uh, also translated service in many places, is the word deacon. Isn't that interesting? Deacon. Uh, and so the, the deaconing, the deaconing, there is a deaconing ministry. And God has given some to minister, to serve in some way. Uh, this gift of service uh, seems to be a, a, uh, an, a humble act of serving others in their need. And so somebody sees a need and they submit to act to serve someone else in that time of need. Uh, this person will, will get the job done. They'll do what is necessary, uh, a, a, an act of service. You might see someone with a, with a need for a meal. Well, Someone with the gift of service is, is going to love to make meals and prepare for somebody and help somebody in that sense. Um, somebody with the gift of service is going to want to do those acts of service, going to somebody's house, helping them with this need, helping them with that need, and acting. It may not be giving financially, but acting, giving their time, giving their energy. Uh, and we see this often. Of, of course, Jesus, an incredible model for us, a picture in his service. Remember what Jesus did with the disciples the night that he was betrayed. Wow, he gets on his knees before them and, and cleans their feet because they needed to be done. And Jesus served his disciples, giving us an example of how we ought to serve one another as well. Uh, this gift of service Oftentimes, it might be one of these other tasks in the church. Hey, there's somebody mowing the lawn. Praise God. The gift of service. Uh, there's somebody working in the sound booth. And when we're not blaming them for everything that's wrong, good job, guys. Uh, we're thankful for, for their service. They're yielding to God in service. I'm just kidding, guys. I hope you understand. Okay. Uh, you know, we're thankful for those gifts of service. You know, putting the bulletin together. And, and, and uh, cleaning up around the church and organizing things. These are gifts of service. And, and sometimes we might think, those, well, you know, that's not such an important gift. Wrong. That's a very important gift. And it's, it's a divine gift. But you won't know you have it unless you submit to God and serve. You won't know you have it. And so uh, let's, let's begin serving and allow God to give us that gift uh, and use us in some way. Let's move on to the next gift. Uh, we have the gift of, of helps and the gift of mercy. Uh, these are two uh, similar gifts. Thinking about the gift of helps here, um, once again, well, let's do mercy since we're there. Romans 12, 8, uh, we're there in Romans 12, verse 8. He that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Evidently a gift of the Spirit, the gift of mercy. Of course, mercy is often translated compassion. Compassion. Somebody with the gift of mercy sees others in their plight and has compassion on them. And they're overcome with the needs of others. And, and they just, they see those needs. And so they have an incredible prayer ministry because they're always thinking about the needs of others. 
and, and they show incredible compassion on others, maybe writing little notes of encouragement, uh, and, and maybe praying with others right there in the service or right th wherever it is. Just have this compassion, seeing them in their difficulties, in their trials, just lending an ear to somebody so they can, they can just get it out and just praying with somebody and crying with somebody. The gift of mercy. And how do we show this gift of mercy? Well, the Bible says we ought to do it with cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. It's not always a downer. Yes, we, we uh, relate to others in their challenges. But we've got cheerfulness in our lives because we serve a great God. And, and he is able. And he will carry us through. And so that gift of mercy is somebody that, that takes somebody who needs that encouragement and says, you know what? God's going to help you through. And with a cheerful heart, cheerful disposition, encourages somebody else as they uh, experience with them, in some sense, that plight. That's the gift of mercy. On to the gift of helps back in 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm going quickly because there are several that I want to just touch on. Uh, but 1 Corinthians 12. And again, my prayer is that God will kind of prick your heart and show you this is something that you can, should, ought to do by the empowerment of God's Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28. Towards the end of the chapter, God hath set some in the church, first apostles, second elegant prophets, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles and the gifts of healings. Helps. Helps. That's interesting. Uh, this is the only place, well, let's see. This gift of helps uh, is, is to come along and support someone. A supporting ministry. And, and maybe God has put it on your heart as you yield to the Holy Spirit and you see somebody serving in a ministry and you think hey, they need help in that ministry. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lead the thing, but if they're leading it, I'll help them out. You know? <laughs> you know, I'll help them out. And so maybe God's given you that gift to help somebody. Sometimes we're a little reluctant to, to yield to, uh, to these gifts because we're afraid that we're going to have to do something we're uncomfortable with or whatever. Maybe it's just helping somebody along. Hey, what do you need help with? Can I do that for you? Can I help you ease the burden on you so that you're able to do the ministry that God's called you to do? Uh, so to help others, uh, come alongside them, support them, uh, relieve them from some of the tasks that they ha are doing uh, so that, uh, uh, that they can better do some of the other ministries that God has called them to. Thankful for the helpers that God has brought into my life, and I'm thankful to be a help to others as well as I see uh, ministries that they're involved in. Well, let's move on. We've looked at helps here, and in that same verse now, uh, in, uh, let's see, verse 28, governments, governments. This is interesting. Uh, the word governments here uh, has this idea uh, of leadership. Leadership. Uh, somebody taking the lead, presiding over something. And so this, uh, this gift of governments, uh, we're in need of leaders. Leaders. The church needs people to stand up and say, hey, this is the direction God says we ought to go. Who's with me? Let's go. And, and take the first step. The first step. And that initiative is so important. I'm, and I'm thankful for many in, a, in this church that have taken the first steps in, in many different ministries. So we need this or we need that. Okay, I'm going to take the first step, take some leadership here, and let's do it. And then to take that, that leadership role, not only the initiative, um, but then even to help along with others and guide them in that way uh, to move along. This seems to be really closely tied um, with the gift, we might say, of administration. Administration. And, uh, and I apologize. I think I was saying governments was leadership. Governments is the administration. And, uh, and the governments... Uh, is the administration. The leadership that we see is in Romans 12. And so let's turn there to Romans 12. I'm sorry for the uh, confusion there. These gifts are so closely tied, it would be a little challenge to distinguish them. 
But in Romans chapter 12 and uh, verse number 8, uh, we see ruling. He that ruleth with diligence. Uh, so he that ruleth with diligence. That's that leadership. That's that initiative. The administration that we were looking at before is this steering, guiding, and keeping things together as we go in that direction. Administrators have to be a little more organized. And I'll tell you this, I don't think that's my gift, <laughs> but I work at it. Uh, but I don't think that's my gift. But there are some in the church that God has blessed with this gift of administering, administration, and, and keeping things neat and organized. Um, I meet every Friday, as the Lord enables, I meet every Friday with Sandy. And uh, we go through the bulletin, and Sandy's always telling me, don't forget this, and what about that? Because you know, she's organized, she's got it together, and I'm so thankful for that. And we need to pray for Sandy. She's not been well with her knees, but uh, uh, pray for her. But I'm just thankful for the ministry that she has, and many others as well, with keeping things neat and organized. And, and that's a gift of, of administration, really, to kind of guide along. The leader may get up front and say something, uh, but oftentimes it's the administrator behind him saying, this is what you need to say. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's a great help. I know Christine is a, big, a great help to me in that sense as well, and I'm thankful for that, the gift of administration. Uh, God has blessed us in so many ways with so many gifts. There are some others uh, that we could look at. And again, uh, you might look at some of these gifts and, and uh, we might disagree and say, well, I don't know if that's a gift of the Spirit. I don't think that is. Or maybe you'd say, well, there, there's another one that I think is a gift of the Spirit. And, uh, and there's part five there in your notes. Um, you're going to take some time this in the next couple of days and look at those verses and see what other gifts uh, perhaps there may be. And, and I'll tell you this, I have not done well with this survey on the gifts of the Spirit. We could do a deep dive and spend months and months and months on these things. And perhaps uh, that will be in the future someday, I suppose. Or maybe there's a Bible study group uh, that would do that kind of a deep dive, and that's fine. And so I, I apologize for not doing the best on that. But just to think, God gives different gifts. And I want you to see... Uh, in 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 12, we see towards the beginning of the chapter here. And uh, the Apostle Paul's talking about these gifts. And you see in verse number 5, it says, There are differences of administrations. And that word administrations is deaconing or service. Service. And we've been kind of highlighting the service gifts here. There are a lot of different service gifts that God has given. And um, there is a place of service for you in the body of Christ. And God is, has placed you in this body and he looks, he is going to use you as you submit to serve him. And so embrace those differences of deaconings, differences of ministerings, of administrations in that sense. And let's serve the Lord and serve each other in those different ways. And allow God to pull it all together. Because that's what he wants to do. But our focus is not on finding that special gift as much as it is on yielding to God's Holy Spirit. And so I want to finish the whole thing by looking um, at Galatians chapter 5, and we'll finish here. In Galatians chapter 5, the classic passage on the fruit of the Spirit. And these characteristics that we see in verse 22 and 23 are beautiful things. Love, Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. 
I believe that when you are yielded to God's Holy Spirit, these things will be evident in your life as God ministers through you. He'll empower you and give you one of these gifts. And the way that you'll know that you have the, a gift from God's Holy Spirit as you serve is that you will experience as you serve love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith. All of these things you will experience as you serve. And then you'll think to yourself, you'll see, wait a minute. This is really exciting to serve God in this way. This is a wonderful thing. And as I yield, I'm, I'm more refreshed. I'm not burnt out. I'm not worn out. Sure, we got to take care of our time and watch our things. You know, I understand all that. But, but you know what? I'm refreshed. I'm re-energized as I serve God, as I yield to the Spirit of God, and as He produces through me by enabling me with divine gifts. I, re, I, I get the benefits of love, joy, and peace, and all of these things. I get those benefits, and it's exciting. It's a wonderful thing. And so we're pursuing a relationship with God as we yield to the Holy Spirit. Then we watch as God empowers us with these gifts. Then we experience the blessings of the fruit of the Spirit. And all of that is because we made a decision to yield to the Spirit. Yield to the Spirit. Finding your spiritual gift and serving God is not as hard as you think it is. It's just yielding to the Spirit of God. Knowing Him and saying yes to Him. Saying yes to Him. You see, these gifts that we saw in verse, or these fruits in verse 22 and 23, there's no law against those. You don't have to have a law that says, be meek. You, know, you don't have to have a law that says, have joy. <laughs> No, these things are natural to the Christian who's yielded to the Holy Spirit. Verse 24, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Here's the problem. You don't know what your gift of the Spirit is because you've been yielding to the flesh. And when there's an opportunity to serve, the God, serve God in the church in some way, you've said to yourself, I don't want to. I'm too tired. I'm too worn out. And in fact, somebody ought to be serving me. And that's why we never get the benefits of the fruit of the Spirit. Because rather than cru crucifying the flesh and its desires and its lusts, we've yielded to those things rather than to God's Holy Spirit. And so we miss out. We miss out on the gifts. We miss out on the service. We miss out on what God is trying to do. And we miss out on the love, joy, and peace. Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit... Let me ask you this question. Are you saved because of your works, your flesh? No. You're saved because of God's grace and by His Spirit. If we live, that is if you're saved, if you have salvation, everlasting life, by the Spirit, then let us also walk in the Spirit. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. Walk in the Spirit. And you'll see what that gift is. And you'll get the incredible benefits as God produces fruit in your life. Our Father, we pray that you would help each one of us to focus on yielding ourselves to you. Lord, may we develop a personal walk and a relationship with you by your Holy Spirit. And I pray that rather than caving into our fleshly, selfish desires. We would submit ourselves to you and allow your Holy Spirit to produce through us by your gifts the incredible strength and divine empowerment to serve as we've never seen before. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.